Our topic today is protists. What exactly is a protist? Well, if it's an organism that has a eukaryotic cell, and it's not an animal, and it's not a plant, and it's not a fungus, then it's categorized as a protist. So that's a very diverse group of organisms that are all thrown into this category. So there are some features that we want to make sure we understand that protists have. First of all, they are eukaryotic organisms, meaning they have a nucleus. So even though many of them are microscopic, just like prokaryotic cells or bacteria, and many of them are single-celled organisms, they are not bacteria, they are not prokaryotic cells because they're euka eukaryotic organisms. They have a nucleus and maybe other organelles. Now, there are protists that are multicellular, but they all have in common that they do not have any tissues. Other differences are in their type of reproduction. Some can reproduce sexually, some reproduce asexually, and some can actually do both, depending on the conditions. Now, as I mentioned, it's a very diverse group, but I want us to focus on basically three main groups or three main divisions within the protists group. So the first are what we would call the animal-like protists. So these are not animals, but they have characteristics so that we call them animal-like. For example, they have motility. They can move around and they're heterotrophic, so they have to get their energy from ingesting other organisms. Okay, then there are the plant-like groups, or group. And so these, we call them plant-like because, like plants, they can photosynthesize. So they have chlorophyll. They can turn sunlight into chemical energy. And then the fungus-like uh, are called that because they really have an appearance that looks like fungi. However, as we'll see, they have some differences and that's why they're not categorized as fungus. So let's start with this plant-like group, the, the photosynthetic protists. And one thing I want to point out is many of these, or the majority of these, are some kind of water-dwelling organism. So whether it's ocean, freshwater, um, most of them reside in wet environments. And they produce collectively about 50% at least or more of the oxygen in our atmosphere is, is produced by these. Many of these make up the phytoplankton in the ocean. So algae... As you, you've probably all seen on a pond, algae is, is a type of protist, is a photosynthetic protist. And there's a few types of algae. There's green algae and brown algae and red algae. So this organism here to the right, I want you to notice, this is a type of single-celled algae. And it's a green algae. You can tell that it has chlorophyll and chloroplast. That's what makes it green. And if you look really closely, you can see that it has actually two flagella that provide movement for this particular algae. And this is called chlamydomonas. This is a single-celled algae organism. The other two types of algae that I want to talk about are diatoms and dinoflagellates. So both of these definitely make up the phytoplankton in the ocean, a good amount of the phytoplankton. And what's really interesting about diatoms, and so this picture here shows you all these intricate shapes. Each one of these organisms is a diatom. They're, they have cell walls that are made of silica, which is basically like glass. And so it makes them really pretty to look at and interesting. But... Their, their cell walls, the leftover cell walls of these dead organisms are also very useful. So if you've ever used diatomaceous earth, either with your pool filter or in gardening, that's just the skeletons, what's left over the cell walls of these organisms. These are also used in abrasive cleaners. You find them in your toothpaste. So these are very useful organisms. Dinoflagellates, as you see pictured here is, is what's going on is red tide, which can be dangerous to sea life because 
as these have a, an overbloom, they have toxins that are produced that are harmful to the fish and other sea life. So let's move along to, so that was our photosynthetic or plant, plant-like plant protist. That was group one. So the second group I want us to talk about are called protozoans. So protozoans are a type of protists that we call the animal-like protists because, remember, they're heterotrophic, meaning they have to ingest their their chemical energy. And they're what we call fat, phagocytic because they engulf it and take it in. Many times we look within this group of protozoans and we we further categorize them or differentiate them in their type of movement. And so we'll talk about four different um, types of protozoans and how each of them moves. One thing I want to point out to you is the protozoans as a whole group are responsible for more diseases than any other group of organism. And so we'll, we'll highlight just a few diseases that are caused by these protozoans. So first protozoan I want to talk about are called the ciliates, and they're named that way because the way that they move are by these tiny little hair-like structures, and you can see all around the outside of this organism, you can see the tiny little hair-like structures called cilia. And so that's why they're called ciliates. This is an organism that is a ciliate called a paramecium. And these organisms also have a micro and a macro nucleus. The next type of protozoan, so again, this, these are still protists. These are the animal-like protists called protozoans. And these, this group is called the flagellates because they have their movement provided by the flagella. And this particular organism shown here is a trypanosome, and it is the cause of Af- African sleeping sickness. This particular um, protozoan alternates its life cycle so it, it between what's called the tsetse fly in Africa and then in humans. So it passes back and forth between those two hosts. The third category are called amoebas. And so pictured here is an amoeba. Their type of movement is by what are called pseudopodia, which means false foot. And so take a minute and Google videos for amoebas, and and it's fascinating to watch them move um, by these protrusions that they put out called pseudopodia. So, for example, you see this, this right here would be pseudopodia, and then this may, the organism may bring this in, okay, and then there'll be another projection that shoots out another pseudopod there. Okay, they engulf their prey, their um, prey by phagocytosis. So the pseudopodia come around, completely engulfing the prey, and then just take it in. So the fourth category of protozoans, or the animal-like protists, are sporozoans. So technically, these don't have movement like they don't have cilia, they don't have flagella, they don't have pseudopods, but they are able to form spores. And this particular organism that's shown here to the right, shown mixed in among red blood cells, is called Plasmodium vivax. This is one of the protists, the protozoans, that causes malaria. So we, we, we think Probably you think, well, malaria is caused by a mosquito, but that actually isn't true. The mosquito is what passes this particular protozoan to us. So this protozoan lives part of its life cycle in a mosquito and part of its life cycle in a human. The last protozoan I want to highlight for you is the slime molds. So these are those that are fungus-like, and you can see from the picture why we would think that it was fungus-like, because it just has an appearance that looks like a fungus. It does have some similar characteristics, but um, it does have differences. For example, when we, and you'll learn when we talk about um, fungi, that their cell walls are made of chitin, 
whereas the cell wall of slime molds is <clears throat> excuse me made of cellulose. Also, they have a little bit different life cycle, um, and so they do definitely have some differences there. One thing I do want to point out to you, though, is the slime mold can exist basically in, in two different life cycles. One is plasmodial, and the other one is cellular. And, and in the plasmodial cycle, it's essentially one large cell with many, many nuclei that have fused together. So that concludes our talk about pro, uh, protists. We've got plant-like protists, the algae, we've got animal-like protists, the protozoans, and then we have fungus-like protozoans, the slime molds.